Okay, welcome back. So if you've been with us so far, we've covered everything there is to cover in the Darwin Info API except OHLC candles. And this tutorial today allows us to conclude all content to do with the Info API. We've covered so far, if you've been with us, uh, getting uh, Darwin tickers from the API, so constructing a Darwin universe creating algorithmic filters via the slash products post endpoint. We've also covered from the very beginning uh, endpoints that allow you to extract both the historical quotes and scores as well as the current quotes and scores. Uh, for instance, there are endpoints that cover extracting just a single attribute or you can extract both historical attributes via one call or particular attributes or an array of the most current attributes using these endpoints. We've covered all of these. The last one that we're going to cover today is candle extraction. This allows you a, a convenient method of getting open, high, and low, and closed data at uh, on, on smaller resolutions. But it's it's also a convenient way of building an OHLC series without having to resample on your own if you're extracting data via the quotes endpoint. And there are two versions of the candles um, endpoints. One accepts a from and to path. Uh, specification whereby you provide a Unix epoch timestamp in seconds uh, as well as a resolution. The second version of the candles endpoint accepts a time frame component as a path query where you specify time frames similar to what you've observed on the investor platform when you cycle through uh, a Darwin's return risk graph. Both the candles and candles forward slash time frame endpoints accept a resolution parameter that allows you to specify in what resolution you'd like your data to be returned to you. There are some limitations as to what time frame or what range of time you can specify and the amount of data you can request in a particular resolution. So the most recent limitations uh, have been specified on the API console. These may or may not be subject to change. So it's recommended that you take a look at these periodically to see what's changed. It may well be that uh, additional data has been permitted to be extracted per, per resolution or some limitations have been reduced. For instance, there's less one minute data that you can extract. Uh, so both positive and negative uh, changes can be observed here. At the end of the day, it's a guideline and uh, meant to allow you to optimize the way you access data via the API. But this you can follow at your own convenience. Let's go ahead and implement the candles, um, the two endpoints that we have in a single function. Now, we've written a function for you called get Darwin OHLC candles, and this essentially implements the two endpoints. This is an example function. So there is source code is that has been provided to you here for demonstration purposes. Very little, if any, error checking has been done. So this is meant to give you an idea of how to develop it as opposed to give you a full-fledged working solution. This, of course, is a working solution, uh, but there are grounds for you adding a lot more to this than is available in the code that you've observed here. In its current state, this function prioritized the from and to specification. So if you were to provide to the function's arguments here, the from and to dates, the function would automatically prioritize the endpoint specification as the one that accepts the from and to epoch ranges. It would therefore ignore the time frame specification and, and proceed to execute via the endpoint that processes from and to ranges. However, if the from value is empty, that condition leads to the second endpoint being triggered, whereby it checks if the time frame has been provided, goes ahead and constructs the query string for the endpoint, and in the function, that endpoint gets executed accordingly because of the change in query parameters. This functionality is, of course, a limited functionality meant to demonstrate how all of this works. Feel free to change the logic, the flow of this function, or feel free to use it as is if this, dem if this demonstration code fulfills your purposes. For every Darwin that's provided in the symbols list as before, as has been the standardized case with all the functions we've written so far in these demo tutorials, um, for every Darwin there is in the list, the API gets called to get OHLC candles for that particular resolution between from and to dates if those have been provided or for the specified time frame, that being 1D, the default, but the available time frames as you've observed on the platform are 1D, W, M, and so on to all. Once the data is returned by the API callback, you're getting everything stored in a dictionary as before for each Darwin in your symbols list. 
Once the data has been returned, it is first converted into a pandas data frame using the data that's been sent back by the API. Once that is done, an index is set up and the data frame is stored as is inside the dictionary. Once all the Darwins have been concluded via the API callback, they are returned as a list and then you can siphon through the list as you please depending on the ticker symbol of the Darwin. So in our examples case, let's go ahead and first um, create the object as we have in previous tutorials. So we make sure that everything is observed from the get-go. Again, we've created our DWX info API object. And as you remember from previous tutorials, everything happening in the background via the base class results in the authentication process um, done for us without us having to do all of it again. Then here in our case, we're going to execute each of the examples that we prepared for you here. The first one specifies the from date and the to date. If you look at the specification for the from and to version of the endpoint, there are some guidelines here as to how much data at what resolution can be requested given your time range. What we've done in this example is request data from seven business days ago up until this point in time at a resolution of one minute. Now this data, if it's crossed over the, the maximum time limit that we can extract one minute data, we won't be returned one minute data. So in this case, let's choose five business days. Once we execute this query, uh, the symbols list that contains KVL at the present time will be sent off to the API and the API will return data for the time range that we've requested. In this case, five business days results in one minute data resolution being sent back to us and execute this function, for example, using Darwin KVL. You'll be returned OHLC data uh, highs and lows, however, are at this point in time specified with max and min. Open and close are open and close. Depending on the amount of data you've requested, you will get resolution one minute data or if the range for which one minute data is available or permissible is um, exceeded by your call, then the data will, that you'll be returned is in the next available resolution for that range of data. In this case, we've been returned one minute data, and this essentially lists all the way from our current, all the way throughout our range, one minute data for the Darwin. It's important to note that even if the Darwin is inactive, which it isn't in this case, but there are Darwins, for instance, that haven't been, uh, that haven't been active for the last, uh, however much time there may be in your range of data. So regardless of the Darwin being inactive or active, data will still be returned here in this OHLC list. It'll just be the same open, high, low, close value for each of the rows for which there was no activity by the Darwin. So it's important to take this into consideration when constructing your the logic for your trading strategy that if you employ the Candles API endpoint, you will get data back for the time frame you've requested or the from and to range of times that you've requested regardless of the activity of the Darwin. The second endpoint that we're going to test here is just a variation of the first. And in this case, we won't be providing um, from N2 timestamps. We'll be providing a time frame and a resolution. In this case, we've chosen one day. So let's modify this to a week. One week worth of one minute data at this point in time is permissible to extract via the endpoint. The function here, as we've written in this example, will prioritize from and to dates. And by default, the from and to dates are already a part of the function arguments. So here, in order for this to work, we need to make sure that we have specified from underscore DT as uh, containing nothing in it uh, in order for this particular implementation, this example, to work. Of course, this is not set in stone. This is purely to get the example running for you to see the difference between the two variations of the endpoint. Feel free to modify this to suit your purposes, as we've discussed earlier. So by specifying from underscore DT as uh, an empty string, adding resolution of one minute and setting a time frame of one week, we're now going to force the function to fall back to the second variation of the API endpoint that uses time frames instead of from and to date ranges. We execute this function and we get the data over the last one week specified in one minute resolution. 
These are the two versions of this endpoint that can uh, that enable you to access data in resolution different resolutions depending on time frame as well as um, custom date ranges, date time ranges worth of data that you'd like to request via the API in OHLC format. It is a supplement to the quotes uh, endpoint that we've uh, used in previous tutorials, both quotes at the present time as well as historical quotes. So this concludes our tutorials for the Darwin Info API in terms of how to go about constructing a universe of Darwin assets, uh, accessing various different endpoints for accessing single values or historical values or present values in terms of arrays of investment attributes, current quotes, current divergences, uh, etc. So you now have all the source code available to you to enable you to expand on it or use it as is and create solutions using the Darwin Info API that allow you to study the data as you deem fit. In future tutorials, we'll go about doing two things. One, we'll take everything that we've done so far in terms of the Info, info API and start building something like a an example terminal where you can visualize this data and drop any indicators that you've built onto the chart in the example that we're going to build. Uh, most likely that will entail using Dash and Plotly as well as possibly implementations involving Bokeh as the graphics libraries that um, will enable us to showcase what we're talking about here right now. And of course, future tutorials will work on demonstrating uh, the additional four APIs that we haven't covered so far. And these include the Darwin Trading API, the Darwin Quotes API, Investor Account Info API, and Quote WebSocket API. So I hope you've enjoyed everything so far. Stay tuned, and uh, it may well be a good time to quickly refresh your memory on all that we've covered so far in terms of going through all the different endpoints in the Darwin Info API, as future tutorials will assume that you have knowledge of the Darwin Info API when we discuss implementations involving other APIs or build certain things such as uh, visual platforms for adding indicators onto charts and analyzing Darwin time series. All of those future tutorials will assume that you've been through these tutorials on the Darwin Info API. As always, if you enjoyed this presentation, please do consider sharing it with your social networks, colleagues, co-workers, and friends. And do subscribe to the Darwin X YouTube channel so you remain up to date with all future videos that will be released in this series and other topics discussed on Darwin X. Thank you very much for your attention. See you next time.